OpenAI's revenue has more than doubled recently, surging past $3 billion annually. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we are discussing a variety of stories around OpenAI, kicking off with reporting from the information that the company has seen significant revenue growth. According to Sam Altman's discussions with staff, as reported by the information, OpenAI has more than doubled its annualized revenue, all the way up to $3.4 billion over the past six months. Previous estimates at various points we've had were the company was on a billion-dollar revenue run rate last summer. By the end of the year, it was closer to $1.6 billion. And in addition to the overall number, we also got some more information about what it's composed of. The vast majority of OpenAI's revenue, $3.2 billion or so, comes from direct subscriptions to ChatGPT, as well as from API fees. This is important because many had assumed that a big chunk, if not the lion's share, of OpenAI's revenue would come through sales of their software through Microsoft's Azure Cloud customers, but it appears that that revenue stream is only about $200 million, again on an annualized basis, which Altman said was about 20% of the revenue Microsoft was generating from that business. Keep in mind this is just a report and we don't have exact information, but if this report is correct, that would mean that OpenAI is making about three times as much from the sales of their software directly as Microsoft is making on OpenAI software through Azure. That would certainly be really interesting if true. It could suggest a lot about the preference of enterprises in terms of working directly with the company rather than going through a third party like Microsoft. It could also suggest for why Microsoft might be interested in diversifying away from just OpenAI. One thing we didn't get with this report is any amount of information about how this revenue compares to what OpenAI is spending. In other words, there's no claim of profitability or anything like that, so it's hard to get a sense of the state of the business overall. One thing that is interesting is that this certainly makes the valuation of OpenAI look a lot more reasonable. OpenAI's last valuation was around $86 billion in a tender offer of employee shares. At that valuation and at this level of revenue, OpenAI is being valued at about 25 times forward revenue, which is not only on the lower end of private AI startup financing, but it is only just a little bit above how NVIDIA stock is being valued in the public markets. OpenAI itself didn't comment on this except to say that the financial details were inaccurate, but it didn't elaborate. Still, this does appear to put OpenAI way ahead of rivals like Anthropic. Last fall, Anthropic told investors that it was generating revenue at around $100 million annualized run rate and projecting that it would reach around $850 million in 2024. People took to Twitter slash X to speculate around which of OpenAI's revenue streams were most profitable. For example, investor Nat Friedman guessed that 50% of the revenue was coming from consumer, 35% was coming from API, including the Microsoft royalty, and about 15% from enterprise. Arun Rao, however, had different calculations. He pointed out that 200 million consumers with 2% paid would be 4 million paid monthly active users at $20 a month, or $80 million of revenue per month, or $960 million per year, which would be about 28% of that $3.4 billion. By way of comparison, he said that YouTube Premium has a 2% conversion rate and a, quote, more widely used and mature product. However, I wouldn't be surprised if the number of people who have ChatGPT accounts is actually much larger than that 2%. In fact, I think the fact that this is a less mature market is more likely to have a higher percentage of these early adopters paying for a subscription. By any measure, the revenue growth is certainly impressive, and the question is, what's likely to happen next? More specifically, how might this new Apple deal impact OpenAI's revenue? According to the latest reports from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the deal is not a cash type of financial deal. The headline reads, Apple to pay OpenAI for ChatGPT through distribution, not cash. Gurman writes, when Apple Chief Executive Officer Tim Cook and his top deputies this week unveiled a landmark arrangement with OpenAI to integrate ChatGPT into the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, they were mum on financial terms. Left unanswered was which company is paying the other as part of a tight collaboration that has potentially lasting monetary benefits for both. But according to people briefed on the matter, the partnership isn't expected to generate meaningful revenue for either party, at least at the outset. According to German sources, quote, Apple believes pushing OpenAI's brand and technology to hundreds of millions of its devices is of equal or greater value than monetary payments. I think anyone with a pulse would agree that OpenAI getting exposure to so many new users is of huge monetary value, even if Apple isn't paying directly. That said, some have pointed out, as we talked about Sam Lesson on yesterday's show, that the deal in some ways does bury the ChatGPT brand under Apple's, and so might not be as brand accretive as it might seem. But even more directly, the partnership could just become really expensive. If hundreds of millions of Apple users start to use ChatGPT regularly, well, then OpenAI's expenses are, of course, going to rise. The question is how much conversion to paid users of ChatGPT will offset any additional costs on the computing side. 
It also seems likely that OpenAI's time as the exclusive option on iOS is not going to last very long. Sources say that an agreement with Google Gemini should be in place later this year, and that Apple has also held talks with Anthropic as another potential chatbot partner. Some analysts speculate that, in fact, the goal for Apple here is to actually make money from these deals by cutting rev share agreements, where if Apple users sign up for premium versions of its AI partner's services, Apple actually gets a cut of that. This would potentially counterbalance how much it makes from Google in Google's search deal, as users potentially shift away from traditional search engines over to chatbots. Anyways, it's a great reminder that even a very simple seeming deal can actually be immensely complex with a lot of unanticipated consequences. One of the things that people have wondered as the Apple OpenAI deal became public is what Microsoft and specifically its CEO Satya Nadella thinks of it. The Wall Street Journal is out with a new article arguing that OpenAI is just Nadella's first step. Indeed, they say that he is building an AI empire. The WSJ writes, Nadella is not content to simply rely on OpenAI to dominate this new era. In recent months, he's been spreading his bets, turning the world's biggest company into the world's most aggressive amasser of AI talent, tools, and technology. They point to investments in companies like Mistral as well as G42, as well as the semi-acquisition of Mustafa Suleiman and his team from Inflection to begin building, quote, what amounts to an in-house OpenAI competitor inside Microsoft. Most of the article is a reflection on how Nadella came up, how he reorganized Microsoft, and how Microsoft's culture has changed over the last decade. But there is some interesting insight around the, quote, new balance of power between Sam Altman from OpenAI and Mustafa Suleiman, the former co-founder of DeepMind and Inflection, who's now leading Microsoft's internal AI efforts. The journal writes Altman's status as the most important figure determining Microsoft's AI strategy is becoming less certain thanks to the arrival of Suleiman and his team. Microsoft insiders say the internal politics and the balance of power between the longtime rivals Suleiman and Altman have been confusing. Anyways, it's a fascinating piece around one of the most important companies in this evolving AI space. A couple more quick hits on OpenAI in the news. Elon Musk has recently dropped his breach of contract lawsuit against the company. The Verge writes Musk's decision to withdraw the lawsuit comes just one day before a scheduled hearing when the judge would have reviewed OpenAI's request to dismiss the case. As once again, the Wall Street Journal points out, the filing, which didn't include any explanation, doesn't necessarily mean the fight between Musk and Altman is over. Musk hasn't posted about his reasoning for withdrawing the suit or what it means for his posture about OpenAI going forward. Now, of course, it doesn't seem like Elon has changed his opinion on OpenAI, given that he threatened to ban all Apple devices from Tesla and SpaceX based on the OpenAI-Apple partnership. Something that is being discussed quite a bit on Twitter slash X right now is recent comments from OpenAI CTO Mira Murati, who said that the AI models that OpenAI has behind the scenes in their labs are not particularly more advanced than those which are publicly available. Inside the labs, we have these capable models and, you know, they're not that far ahead from what the public has access to for free. Now, the big question here is whether this is actually true. I think by and large, there is much skepticism that this is not true. Although as people point out, to the extent that it is, it has big implications for whether we're actually reaching a capacity plateau with current methodologies. Meanwhile, in the search for ever more advanced models, OpenAI has had to look outward for more access to computing power. The company has recently announced that they and Microsoft are partnering with Oracle to get even more computing capacity to run ChatGPT. Up until now, OpenAI has fully relied on Microsoft for its computing needs, but as The Verge puts it, as this Oracle deal makes clear, OpenAI needs more compute than Microsoft alone can give it if it wants to keep up with demand and prevent future ChatGPT outages. Whatever the stickiness of the deal behind the scenes, the market loved it, with Oracle stock up 13% based on that new AI demand and the announcement of the OpenAI deal. So there you have it, friends. Lots of interesting things going on in the world of OpenAI. For now, though, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.